Well, good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning service here at the Beacon Church, Ashton in Makerfield. It's great to see, uh, see you all here this morning, especially those of you who are back from holiday. I hope you've had a, a lovely break and are back rested and refreshed. We also welcome you if you're joining us on Zoom uh, or if you're catching up with us on, on YouTube. And we do pray that we'll all be, uh, be blessed together. Uh, this morning we're continuing our series looking at the Psalms and this week we're looking at Psalm 117 which is uh, the shortest chapter in the Bible and also the the middle the pivot chapter in in the Bible uh, our title for today is Lord of the Nations and our speaker this morning is uh, Alan Harrison so I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to sing and then we're going to have our Bible reading and remember that God is indeed the God of all nations. So, so let's pray. Lord God and Heavenly Father, we thank you that this morning we can come into your presence to praise and to worship you, the creator of all things. We thank you that you love us with a love that never changes and will never let us go. We thank you that you've chosen us as individuals and you've brought us together to be your body here at the beacon. We're a body made up of many parts and of people from many backgrounds and nations. Thank you for all that you've done for us and the way you've blessed us and continue to do so. We pray for each other, help us to love and care for one another, especially those who are struggling at this time with illness, family issues, money worries, or other troubles. We think especially about Archie at this time. We thank you for him and his commitment to you and the example and encouragement he has been to us. Be with him in hospital, give wisdom to the doctors and those caring for him, and we ask that he will know your presence with him. Bless Janet and Hannah, strengthen them, and may he soon be well enough to return home to them. So, Lord, this morning, we ask that you'll speak to us through Alan. Give us ears to hear what you have to say to us. We also pray for our children in Kids Church. We thank you for them. They're a blessing to us. May they, as they hear stories about you, come to know you personally. So this morning, may the songs we sing and the words that we hear all bring, bring glory and honour to your name. Amen. So let's sing our first song.
It's, uh, it's now time for our Bible reading, and this morning we're going to have, it, uh, have our reading read to us in different languages as we invite some of our friends to read Psalm 117 in their first language. It's a, it's a psalm where we are called to praise the God of all nation, and this reminds us that we are indeed uh, all one nation and all one in, in Christ Jesus. So, Alina, if you would uh, come up, please. And... Start off for us. Psalm 116. Хвалить Господа всі племена, прославляйте Його всі народи, бо зміцнилось Його милосердя над нами, а правда Господня навіки. Аллилуйя. And our collects, please. Nous allons lire le psaume chapitre 117. Louez l'Éternel, vous gens de toute nation. Chantez ses louanges, ô vous, tous les peuples, car son amour pour nous est immense. La fidélité de l'Éternel subsiste à jamais. Louez l'Éternel. Yana. Psalm 117 Lobet den Herrn, alle Heiden, preiset ihn alle Völker, denn seine Gnade und Wahrheit waltet über uns in Ewigkeit. Halleluja. Simon, please. And then, when Simon's done, hallo. Psalm 117 Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, thank you to everyone who read. Uh, I understood a couple of them, I think. Uh, the French and the German one. <laughs> <laughs> from me, from me, sorry? <laughs> that, that one just goes without saying, really. <laughs> what did, uh, oh yeah, he was in English, wasn't he? That's right. Uh, it's great to be here, as I say. Thank you, everyone, uh, for those readings. Uh, <laughs> it has been said, uh, I'm not sure by whom, but there are short hymns and long hymns, short prayers, long prayers, short speeches, long speeches, short sermons, long sermons. Why are you to me with that? Oh, oh, sorry, no, I'm just going short, long, short, long. <laughs> honestly, honestly. But short is better, apparently. Uh, last time I spoke here at the Beacon, uh, we were going through Acts of the Apostles. And I had two chapters to go through of Acts of the Apostles. And my big dilemma back then was, how on earth am I going to keep this short? This time out, I've got Psalm 117. <laughs> two verses. <laughs> two verses i've now got the opposite dilemma obviously of how on earth do I, I make this into something useful something meaningful to us as anthony and james have said in the previous weeks in our summer series we have been looking at these egyptian halal psalms and these psalms would have been sung before and after the Passover supper. Psalm 113 and 14, before the meal, Psalms 115 to 118, would have been the hymn that they sang at the end of the supper. Now, sometimes we may not clearly see the relevance of some Old Testament scriptures today. But if you think about it, 
anything that relates to Jesus is of great value and attractiveness for the Christian. So the strong likelihood that this group of Psalms, which formed part of his Passover celebrations, surely that fact enhances their interest and their importance to us. At the last Passover that we see recorded in the Bible, the first sitting of what we now call the Lord's Supper, he and his disciples would no doubt have sung these psalms before and after the meal, which actually I've, I've often puzzled uh, when you read Matthew's version of that Last Supper, he told us when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Well, actually, because that was after the Passover, that hymn that they sung would have included our psalm for today. And each psalm in this group had its own literary history, but together, as I say, they're called the Egyptian Hallel. A commentary in song, really, of the Exodus story. 113, Psalm 113, grounds the whole of creation in the Lord. 114 records the Exodus as God the creator manages his creation for his people's welfare. 115 and 116, they balance each other as respectively the community and the individual are rescued from spiritual in 115 and physical in 116, death. And 117, today's psalm, extends this exodus truth, the exodus of the Israelites, to its worldwide limits. In other words, what was done for Israel has now been done for all. Finally, in 118, which Anthony may cover next week, we look at us joining the great procession through the gates of heaven into the very presence of the Lord himself. I really like how one writer named this group of psalms when he called them a cantata of salvation. I think that was a fantastic way to describe these psalms. But having said all that, I now need to come back to today's psalm, all two verses of it. As Glynn said, the shortest psalm, the shortest book in the Bible, the pivotal point of the Bible, because we reach the halfway point. And what can we learn from this psalm today? To help us this morning, uh, it's already been mentioned, but I'm going to look at this psalm under the heading of the Lord of the nations to see what it means for us. Because firstly, it's clear from this psalm that there is only one Lord. I don't know if you can remember back, but in week one, James made a statement that I'm sure you were all thankful for when he said that there is only one God. And he said he believed that there was only one God. And you'll be pleased to know, I believe exactly the same. There is only one true God, one true Lord, whom we worship and praise, who created all things. Two weeks ago, Anthony was looking at Psalm 115. And we see from that psalm that the, the nations around Israel mockingly inquired of Israel, where is your God? And Anthony said at that time 
that Israel was unique in that the nation only had one God. Because all the surrounding nations were polytheistic. They had many gods who served many different functions. And the Israelites' God was invisible. But the gods of all the other nations, they had images to represent them. Our psalm opens and closes with praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And praising the Lord should be a mark of every believer today as it was of the new Christians in the early church and has been throughout church history. This word praise comes from that Hebrew word hallel, from which we get the word hallelujah. But also in the first verse, we are told to extol God. Extol comes from a Hebrew word, shavar. And that word can also mean to boast about or to laud. So this means that when we praise the Lord, we not only tell him of his greatness, but actually we also brag about him. We tell about him to those who hear our songs. Worship and praise are the highest occupations to which we can dedicate our voices because they are activities that will occupy us for all of eternity. But there is only one God, one Lord, who is worthy of this praise. And that is our Lord, our God, whom we serve, who we praise, who we thank for everything that he is to us. But, as the title for this morning implies, he's not just our Lord, but he is the Lord of the nations. And that word translated nations here is quite often translated Gentiles. People who are not of Semitic origin. The Hebrew word translated peoples refers to all the diverse nationalities in the world. It was great this morning that we heard that psalm in different tongues because he is the Lord of all nations. And you find as you look through the Psalms that the words all the earth, all peoples, all nations appear frequently in the book of Psalms. I've just put a few on the screen there, but there are many, many more. The Jewish people were supposed to be separated from the Gentiles, but they weren't supposed to be isolated from them. Because back in Genesis, God called Abraham to found a nation that would bring blessing to all the earth, not just to themselves, but to all the earth. However, Israel failed, became guilty, of imitating the Gentiles instead of illuminating them with the light of God's truth. But you know, we see that God still had a plan. His plan was laid out for us in Isaiah that he was going to send his servant to be a light for the Gentiles because his love for the nations was and still is so great. 
After God had sent his servant, <clears throat> the early church carried the light of the gospel to the whole world. Paul even quoted the opening verse from today's psalm in Romans chapter 15 as part of his explanation of the relationship between the church, the new church, and Israel as he preached to the Gentile nations. The apostles and the other early Jewish Christians also praised the Lord among both Jews and Gentiles as we've been going through in the book of Acts. Through this expanding witness, many Gentiles trusted Jesus and praised God, praised the Lord with Jewish believers. Because again, it's, it's great how God pulls everything together. Believing as believing Jews and Gentiles, we are one body. As Glynn prayed in Christ. And as Paul explained to all of the early churches. So, that's a quick look at today's psalm. Tells us that our God is not just our God, but he is the Lord of all nations. He is the Lord of the earth. <clears throat> So great, I can sit down now then. That's it, done. Can sing some more praise songs, praise the Lord. Well, not quite, not quite. Because what we really need to think about today is what does this mean for us? What does the fact that our God is Lord of the nations really mean? today <clears throat> should stop going to football the day before i speak especially when we play so badly right uh <laughs> you remember the uh tv show uh where the contestants said i'll name that tune i'll name that tune in one <laughs> right i've got a tune for us stick your hand up when you know what this is. I'm sure there's some people's hands will go up pretty quickly. But just have a listen. There's a little pause. There's a long pause. <laughs> the technology's failed me. You all know, you all know. <laughs> oh, I hate it when techno. I, I tested it all before and it worked. And it, it would have been quiet for a little bit and then it would have gone, drrr, you know, like it does. And you'd have all been like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mission impossible. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, from the Mission Impossible TV series, or if you, if you prefer it, ladies, uh, the Mission Impossible movies as well. But in that show, the IMF, the Impossible Mission Force, was given a task to do, which was always a seemingly impossible mission. But today, we don't have a Mission Impossible. We have what I'm calling this morning, our hallelujah mission from what we've seen in Psalm 117. And I just want to consider this because sometimes when we think of the term mission, our thoughts often turn to missionaries going overseas, leaving family and friends, immersing themselves in a radically different culture, surrounded by... <laughs> strange sounding words, conversations, unusual smells, new foods that tickle the taste buds in ways they'd never thought possible. 
I don't know about you, but that does seem like a mission impossible to me. I just do not feel that is my calling. Yet God in his love has enabled missionaries and their families to learn new languages, to adapt to new cultures, to brave the unknown, but to go and share the good news of Jesus. Well, this morning, I'm not thinking of the mission of missionaries because I want to consider the mission that our Lord and Savior has given to each and every one of us. What is that mission that he sends you on or the mission that he's sending me on? And how do we carry it out? Because first, what is the mission? Well, to learn about the mission, you don't need to have a secret tape message that self-destructs in five seconds after you've listened to it. Rather, we need to take to heart the word of God today before us in Psalm 117. What is our mission? Is it to buy tickets to Africa and become missionaries? Is it to move to another town, start a church there, invite people to worship? Is it to knock on doors in our own community asking whether they go to church or not, ready to tell them about Jesus? Is it to go and serve on a beach mission, as James shared with us last week? We might often picture mission as falling into these categories, world missions, home missions, door-to-door -door evangelism, outreach. But our mission is broader than any one of those tasks. Certain Christians at certain times, under certain circumstances, may be called or asked to do one of those things, and they are helping to carry out the mission by doing so. But what is the broader mission? One word from the psalm summarizes it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Our mission is to praise the Lord. That's what our God wants all nations, all peoples to do, including you and me. And this psalm makes it very clear. But here again, don't think of this in a narrow way that focuses only on a handful of tasks that we do. Because sometimes we only think of singing hymns in church as praising the Lord, but praising him is much more than that, which we begin to see when we ask, why do we praise our Lord and what do we praise him for? Both questions have the same answer. Which verse 2 of this psalm today gives us? God's love toward us is so great that Jesus, the eternal Son of God, humbled himself to save rebellious sinners like me. He not only took on our humanity, but he took on himself our misery, our wretchedness, our shame. He clothed himself with our guilty rags, became sin for us. He took up our place under God's wrath on that cross. So great was Jesus' love for us. And he did that for each of us. And is this alone not enough reason to praise him? Isn't this what all of our praise is about? His love for us. 
The Father gave his Son as a sacrifice for us. Jesus suffered and died in our place. But there is more. Because the psalm not only points to his love, but it points to his faithfulness as well. His truth never fails. It stands forever. For our crucified Savior has risen from the dead. He rose in victory and in triumph. He keeps his promises for the Lord is faithful. He doesn't change. As the eternal I am, he remains faithful to his promises. So what is our hallelujah mission? To praise our loving and faithful Lord. To praise him in all that we do in life. Our hallelujah mission isn't just coming here and singing on a Sunday morning. It's also taking care of our family on a Sunday afternoon. Working diligently at our jobs on a Monday morning. Helping a friend on Tuesday evening, studying God's word on a Wednesday. Showing kindness on a Thursday to that troublesome neighbor. Enjoying our Friday filled with thankfulness to God. Doing our Saturday chores. Our hallelujah mission is to praise him in all that we do in our life or as the apostle paul expressed it in his letter to the romans to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god because that's also how we carry out our hallelujah mission our entire life sunday through saturday is a show and tell. Just as God has shown us his love by giving us Jesus, we must show his love to other people. We must humbly serve. We must gladly forgive. We must kindly act. We must lovingly help. We must earnestly pray for others. We must show them the same love that we have received. We must let them see God's love at work in us as we gladly do what the Lord gives us to do as a parent, as a child, as a worker, an employer, a husband, a wife, single person, as a citizen, as a Christian. We must let others see how important God's love is to us as we place his word of love first in our life. Joyfully hearing that word and regularly learning it. When we come to services each week, we're praising our God. We're carrying out our hallelujah mission even before we sing a hymn. Because we are showing others that our God is more praiseworthy than all those other things that we could be doing instead. And as we show that love to others, we must be ready to tell them of God's love. That's the tell part of show and tell. Speak to them of God's promises in Jesus. Tell them of his love and his faithfulness. Tell of our Savior's love toward us, sinners though we are. His love should move us to show that love to others. Show and tell. That's how we carry out our hallelujah mission. 
Now, you may think that you don't have all the gifts to do what's needed. And you're probably right. You don't have all the gifts. But that doesn't mean that you can't carry out the hallelujah mission, praising God through all that you do. Because Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians that there are many different gifts, but the Holy Spirit gives you, he gives me, the gifts that God wants us to have. So use what the Spirit has given you. Use it to show and to tell of God's love and his faithfulness. That's how you and I each carry out the hallelujah mission. The Holy Spirit graciously gives each of us what we need to carry out our part. Some of his gifts come through natural abilities. Some are developed through study and practice and experience. But no matter how gifted we are or how hard we've worked, never forget it's all a gift, a gracious gift, an undeserved gift given to us by the Spirit. But we must use those gracious gifts for service. Because so many outside the body of Christ use their natural gifts selfishly, trying to make themselves happy and successful. And it may be tempting for us to, to follow such examples, pursuing our own happiness. But actually, that pursuit will only lead us away from Jesus, away from true happiness. Rather, we have to use the gifts we're given to serve. Just as Jesus served us to ransom us as his own. So serve the Lord by using your gifts to serve others. Show and tell, show God's love as you serve and you tell others. But do put them into practice. Do put your gifts into practice. Put them to work. Don't neglect them. Don't get all wrapped up thinking, oh, I could only serve better if only I had this gift or I had that gift. Use what God has given you. But if you think another gift would be beneficial in your hallelujah mission, then pray. Pray about it. And if God gives you the time and the opportunity to develop that, then great. But in the meantime, continue to use what you have. He is working through your service, through my service, to accomplish his mission. And he's certainly give us, given us gifts. He's given us all different gifts. But we are united in Christ. We're united in mission to praise our Lord in all that we do. Our hallelujah mission. The Lord has chosen you. He's chosen me for his mission. He's gifted us with what we need so that we can show his love to others and tell them of his faithfulness. So praise the Lord in all you do every day of your life. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord of the nations. Jesus, hope of the nations, Jesus, 
Please be seated. Well, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, I want to say thank you to, to Dan and Emma for uh, leading us in, in music today. Very stripped back compared to what we're used to, but it's great to bring our praise to the Lord. I'm just delighted as well by how all the songs have, have reinforced our theme that we've been thinking about this morning, which is that God is Lord of uh, the nations. So thank you to Alan for, uh, for speaking uh, to us today. Thank you uh, to those who read to us. Lovely to hear the different languages. Um, as Alan was speaking, I was reminded of something that uh, John Piper said, the um, uh, US uh, pastor. Uh, he, he famously said, mission exists because worship doesn't. Mission exists because worship doesn't. And uh, his point is there that mission is not ultimate, worship is ultimate. Uh, we won't engage in mission in the new creation but we will glory in the Lord. Meanwhile, of course, each one of us is on mission, called to take our part, our place in God's plan to bring blessing to all nations. But the ultimate goal of missions is the glory of God. And I think Psalm 117 is just a brilliant reminder of that. Uh, welcome, welcome, kids. Uh, hope uh, Kids Church was good. Welcome, uh, Kids Church teachers who've uh, who've joined us. A special welcome if you've uh, been away on holiday and come back. Hope you had a great time and uh, have come back feeling nicely refreshed. Now, I want to talk for a little while about uh, next Sunday's service. It's going to be a very exciting moment for us as a church as we witness seven. Let me just say that again, seven people being baptized. In alphabetical order, a first name, Adam, Carrie, Katie, Luke, Mia, Nicole, and uh, Ollie. Now, we know from the Bible that uh, we're baptized as an act of obedience because Jesus commands that we be so. We're baptized as an act of confession to declare publicly that we belong to Jesus, uh, to show what God has done for us, that we've died to our old way of life and we've been raised to new life in Christ. And we're baptized as an act of dedication to show our desire to follow Jesus in the whole of our lives, as Alan has been reminding us this morning. So we are delighted to be holding a baptism service next Sunday when I say again, seven of our number will take this step of faith and obedience to the Lord. Now I'm aware there's been uh, uh, some uncertainty and even I've detected a little bit of anxiety about how things are going to happen. So I'm gonna give the main headlines here. Uh, which were also included uh, in the newsletter that went out on Friday and will be sent out again uh, on Friday this week. So first of all, just to say, just to confirm, the service will start a little bit later than usual at 10.30, so 10.30 next Sunday morning. It will be an all-age service, meaning their children will be present throughout uh, though the lounge uh, area will still be available as usual for the babies and toddlers who might uh, struggle to stay in the main hall. The service itself will involve a mixture of songs because each person being baptized gets to choose a song. So that's seven songs. They've already chosen them and they're great songs. And, uh, and so each one, I hope as well, will be able to share a short testimony of what the Lord has done in their life James will be giving us a short talk and uh, we'll also be having a spot on uh, going back to school, uh, particularly for, uh, for, for the children. We're going to be borrowing a baptistry from St. Mark's Haydock, a mobile baptistry, which uh, we'll set up in the car park uh, just uh, to the right there outside the building. Uh, we're putting it outside partly for reasons of space and partly because we don't want to risk damaging the floor in here. So towards the end of the service uh, next week, we'll file outside uh, for the baptisms themselves. So you might want to check the weather beforehand. 
and come dressed accordingly, whether that's shorts if the sun's beaten down, or whether it's coats and brollies if it's going to be chucking it down. One way or the other, we will be outside for the baptisms. Um, however, please note, therefore, that the car park will not be available for parking your car next week. So if you normally park in the car park, you won't be able to do so uh, next week. You'll need to plan to park on one of the, the local streets. There's plenty of space around here uh, in the very near uh, vicinity. Now, we don't know how many additional people will be with us, uh, but of course we are likely to have guests of those being baptized. We will make sure that every chair in the building is out and we'll probably have some smaller chairs at the front here um, for, for, for children particularly to, to sit on. But I encourage those of us who are regulars here at the church um, just to be considerate of others. Uh, for example, if we end up with some people having to stand uh, around the edge, uh, which we might do, if we do, and if you are able to stand, then do please consider giving your seat to a visitor. The service will be streamed out uh, to Zoom as usual, though it might not be possible to capture the actual baptisms on Zoom. So I do want to make that uh, clear. And as James in particular would want me to emphasize, we'll, we'll, we will be celebrating with cake after the service. So uh, please uh, stay and mingle and uh, chat with others, uh, particularly uh, with, uh, with any visitors to us. Now, I hope all that makes sense. Uh, there's a lot more we could say, but I won't. Uh, do please speak to me if you've got any further queries about anything uh, that might be happening next week. Most importantly of all, I, I want to encourage us to pray. Pray for those who are being baptized, that the Lord will protect them this week, that he'll bless them as they take this uh, step of faith and obedience and pray for the service itself, for all that will happen, uh, for all that will be shared, that the Lord will speak through the service, that he'll strengthen uh, those of us who are Christians and that he'll speak into the lives of those who might be visiting us who don't know the, the Lord Jesus. So we're gonna spend a little bit of time praying now for the service and for those being baptized please a few of us uh, as if you would like to do so or as you feel led to do so please lead us in prayer for next week's service and especially for those being baptized and then i will bring this time to a close so please a few of some of our regular prayers aren't here this morning so some of you are going to have to step up and pray so please do that Amen. Father God, thank you for um, the way you work in every one of these people's lives, Father, for, for the way that you have preserved us up here, Father. And I thank you that we can make these decisions that um, we can show this uh, in many ways. But Father, mm -hmm. I pray that you will work with us, Father, but not on this world, but for the rest of their lives, Father, that they will worship you and, and, and give themselves to you. Thank you, Father, that this 
Amen. Lord, thank you for the gift of baptism that you yourself in your kindness have provided. You've made this a way for us to declare publicly our love and our passion for you. We ask, Lord, that your grace and your peace would be poured out on uh, those being baptized next week. We pray for Adam, for Carrie, for Katie, for Luke, for Mia, for Nicole and for Ollie. And we pray that you would work deeply within their hearts to renew and refresh them each day this week, that you would bless them, and Lord, that you would give them a hope and a confidence that comes only from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you. And now over to, to Glenn for notices. Okay, just a uh, just a few uh, a few notices. Uh, of course, this is the last week of the summer holidays, and uh, many of you will be thinking about uh, being back in school, maybe by the end of the week or, or by next week. So it's the the last picnic in the park on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Weather weather permitting, and this week it's uh, going to be at Stubbshire Cross Park. It's also the last summer social on Thursday. And that's going to be at the, the home of Anthony and Emma from 7.30 onwards. On, the, on Saturday uh, this week, the 3rd, we'll be holding safeguarding refresher sessions at 9.30 and 11 a.m. for those involved in any of the children's works or works with vulnerable adults at the church. The sessions will last about an hour. And if you haven't already, please sign up. Uh, following the link on the notices email. If you can't do Saturday this week, there's a couple of uh, early evening sessions on Wednesday the 8th of September. I really can't stress enough the importance of this training uh, in our commitment to creating a safe environment for our children. So please make sure uh, that if you're involved in the work that you sign up for this uh, refresher. And uh, you've heard all about the baptismal uh, next week. 10.30 start, don't forget, 10.30. Okay, one last thing, and then, uh, and then I'll close in prayer.
Lord, we thank you for this morning and for the reminder that you are indeed the Lord of all nations and that we are your children. Thank you for your great love towards us. And may we reflect that love this week as we go about our daily tasks. Let us with the psalmist praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless us as we depart until we meet again. Amen.